Hello, and welcome to the first supporting video for an article about value of information analysis for applied ecologists. In this video, we'll show how to use a spreadsheet to calculate the value of perfect information. And we use an example of a frog translocation under the uncertainty about the presence of disease at the destination site. This is the spreadsheet you have as supporting information, file number 1 and sheet eBPI. Now remember, the idea of the value of perfect information is to quantify how much better our management would be if we could eliminate uncertainty completely. So let's get started. First, remember that BOI is a tool of decision analysis, so we need to start by specifying our decision problem and objectives. In this example, we will assume we have a population of a frog species within a protected area, and we have the objective of maximizing the number of individuals in the protected area by the end of the next 10 years. Now the first thing we need to do is to define our actions. If the existing population has, say, 100 individuals, we could translocate 50 of them to a new site and try to establish a new population there. Or we could do nothing. And for this example, we will keep this simple set of actions. However, we are uncertain about the presence of chytrid fungus at the destination site, so the next step is to articulate this uncertainty into a set of plausible hypotheses. In this case, chytrid may be present at the new site, or it may be absent from the new site. We then need to define a belief that either hypothesis is true. In this case, based for example on published information for the study area, we think both hypotheses are equally likely. So there is a 50% chance of Kitri being present at the new site, and a 50% chance of its absence. And this is what we call a prior belief. Now the outcomes of our actions may differ depending on the true state of the system. For example, if we choose to translocate and Kitrid is absent from the new site, the translocated individuals will multiply, and we could predict, for example using a population model, we will have a total of 135 individuals across the predicted area at the end of the 10 years. However, if Kitrid is present, the individuals that we have translocated will die, and the existing population could also struggle after the removal of individuals, so we could assume that the model in this case predicts 55 individuals. On the other hand, if we choose not to translocate, then the outcomes will not depend on the presence of chytrid at the new site, and the model could predict that the existing population will maintain its current size. So which action should we choose? We can base our decision on the expected value of each action under uncertainty. This is calculated as the average of the outcomes under each state of the system with the belief in each state as a weight. So to put it in practice, if we translocate frogs, there is a 50% chance of getting 55 individuals, and a 50% chance of getting 135 individuals. In total, we have an expected value of 95 individuals. If we choose not to translocate, we have the same chance of getting 100 individuals. So that is also the expected value of doing nothing. Now the expected value of the decision under uncertainty is simply the value of the decision with the best expected value across uncertainty. case, based on these predictions, under the current uncertainty, we would choose not to translocate and would expect to get 100 individuals.
Now, if we had access to perfect information, we would know exactly what a true state of the system was, and we'd choose the best action accordingly. In this case, if we knew that Kitty was present, we would choose not to translocate, and we would expect to get a hundred individuals. However, we don't know yet if that's the case, so we must assume that the probability that perfect information would confirm Kittrick presence is equal to a prior belief, in this case 50%. On the other hand, if we knew that Kittrick was absent from the new site, we would choose to translocate and expect 135 individuals. Again, there is a 50% chance that this is the case. So the expected value of the decision under uncertainty is the sum of what we would expect under each state, because we would always choose the best action, multiplied by the prior belief in each state. In this case, access to perfect information would allow us an expected outcome of 117.5 individuals. Now the difference between the value of the decision when perfect information is available and the value of the decision when we have to make it under uncertainty is the value of perfect information. In this case, if we could eliminate uncertainty, we would expect a gain of 17.5 individuals. Of course, perfect information is difficult to achieve in applied ecology but it gives us an idea of how important that uncertainty is. If we want something more realistic, we can look at the value of sample information instead. We will do that in the next video.